Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about droplet transmission and precautions. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What are we going to discuss in this video? The learning objectives are What is droplet transmission? Factors contribute to the generation of droplet particles. Infectious diseases transmitted through droplet routes. What are droplet precautions? Let's get into the topic. What do we mean by droplet transmission? Droplet transmission is a mode of disease transmission in which infectious agents such as bacteria or viruses are spread through respiratory droplets expelled by an infected person. How are they expelled? They are expelled by an infected person when he or she coughs or sneezes. And these droplets can contain pathogens if the person is infected with a respiratory illness. If a person inhales or comes into direct contact with a respiratory droplet containing pathogen, the infectious agent can enter their respiratory tract through the mouth, nose or eyes, potentially causing infection. Next comes factors contributing to the generation of droplet particles. First is respiratory activities. When an infected person coughs, sneezes, talks, sings or breathes heavily, they release respiratory droplets of various sizes into the air. Next is environmental factors. Environmental factors play a role in the generation of droplet particles. Poor ventilation, stagnant air, or crowded indoor spaces can lead to the accumulation of infectious particles and increase the risk of droplet transmission. Next comes aerosol generating procedures. For example, intubation, bronchoscopy, nebulizer treatments or high flow oxygen therapy can produce a significant amount of aerosols increasing the risk of droplet transmission to healthcare workers. Next comes size of the droplet particles. Smaller droplet that is droplet nuclei or aerosols less than 5 micron or micrometer in diameter can remain suspended in the air for longer periods which are responsible for airborne transmission. Larger particles which is 5 to 10 micron or micrometer in diameter tend to quickly fall to the surfaces and they are responsible for droplet transmission. Furthermore, these larger droplet particles travel a short distance and tend to fall to the surfaces within 6 feet or 2 meters. And hence, droplet transmission occurs when a person comes into closer contact with an infected person. Next comes infectious diseases transmitted through droplet routes. This include influenza or flu, common cold, Pertussis, that is oofing cough, streptococcal pharyngitis, pneumococcal disease, mumps, etc. All these mentioned diseases spread through respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. Next comes droplet precautions. First is hand hygiene. Perform hand hygiene for at least 60 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Follow the 5 golden moments of hand hygiene all the time. Next comes personal protective equipments. First comes surgical mask which reduces the risk of inhaling the respiratory droplets. Next is eye protection goggles or face shield to protect the eyes from the droplets next is gloves gloves should be worn when there is a possibility of coming into contact with respiratory secretions or contaminated surfaces next is gown gown is worn when there is a risk of extensive contamination or when performing procedures that may generate splashes of respiratory secretions 
Next comes patient education about respiratory hygiene or cuff etiquette. Educate patients about respiratory hygiene including proper coughing and sneezing etiquette. Encourage them to cover their mouth and nose with a tissue or their elbow when coughing or sneezing and to dispose of tissues properly. Next comes environmental cleaning. Frequently touched surfaces and patient care equipment should be cleaned and disinfected regularly using appropriate disinfectants as per the institutional policies. Next is patient placement. Patients with respiratory infections should be placed in private rooms whenever possible. If private rooms are not available, maintain a distance of at least 3 feet that is 1 meter between patients. Next is respiratory protection. For certain procedures that generate aerosols such as intubation or bronchoscopy, additional precautions for example N95 respirators or equivalent may be necessary. Next is visitor restrictions. To minimize the risk of transmission, visitor restrictions may be implemented in healthcare facilities during outbreaks or when droplet precautions are in place. For further reference, you can refer CDC guidelines or your institutional policies. So here you go with droplet transmission and precautions. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.